Hello, dear and beloved science students. It's your favorite science teacher, Mr. Hackenlotley, coming to you on Monday, May 4th, during the lockdown. Okay, last Friday, the assignment I had given you was deadly windows. Deadly windows. Okay, let me just uh, kind of go over this. So the research background says glass makes a great window pane because you can see right through it. However, the fact that windows are see-through makes them very dangerous for birds. Have you ever r accidentally run into a glass door or been confused by a tall mirror in a restaurant? Just like people, birds can mistake a see-through window or a mirrored pane for an opening to fly through or a place to get food and will accidentally fly into them. These window collisions can hurt the bird or even kill it. Window collisions kill nearly one billion birds every year. Okay, so the setup of it is that they wanted to ask this very specific question. The very specific question they wanted to ask were whether these window collisions were um, primarily birds that were local or were they migrant birds, okay? So they knew that there was a very specific time of the year in which these birds were flying through the area. And so what they did, which I thought was really interesting, was they set up a series of nets were, which were at window height, but not near buildings, okay? And then they also wanted to track how many, they, they looked at a number of very, specific windows and monitored them for a time. Okay, so it was really very interesting. So um, what they then did, okay, let's turn it. So you saw on page three that what they did was notice that they had uh, 50 resident birds were netted and 129 migrant birds were netted. Okay, so uh, when you look at that, you can say like, okay, it seems like there's about two to two and a half times more migrant birds in the area at that time of year. So if there's, you know, uh, two and a half times more, then you would expect that if the window collisions were happening at the same rate, you would have that same sort of percentage. But the local birds only uh, ran into those specific windows one time, while the migrant birds ran into it 23 times. So that's really showing that the vast majority of the window collisions are those migrant birds, okay? And then, as you can see, I had a little bit of trouble with uh, percentages. But uh, for window collisions, uh, only 4% of the uh, dead birds were residents, 96 were migrants, and I think it's something like 28% um, uh, uh, of the resident birds were netted, um, while 72% um, were uh, migrants, okay? So it seems like there's probably more migrant birds in the area than residents, which is what you'd expect, but, um, but those migrant birds are dying much more often when they are um, running into windows, okay? So that's really what you're seeing. Okay, so uh, what data we use to graph your answer? Uh, the independent variable would be the type of bird, resident or migrant, and the dependent variable would be the amount of netted or dead birds. Okay, so then when they put it on the, the graph there, see that nice little graph? And you can see that the migrant birds are the majority of both the netted birds and of the, um, uh, of the uh, birds that die by collisions. Okay, so when you're making a claim, you can say something like uh, migrant birds comprise the majority of birds who die by window collision. That would be a good one. Um, when it says what evidence was used to write your claim, uh, reference specific parts of the tables or graph, Remember, that is always about numbers, okay? So make sure in your answer you put numbers there. Like uh, the numbers that I might put in there would be something like um, uh, 
in the window collisions, um, a very, only 4% of those birds who die by window collisions are residents, while 96% are migrants, okay? Notice how those, that has numbers in it. Uh, when I'm asking an answer, I, I always want to hear numbers. Explain your reasoning why the evidence supports your claim. Connect the data back to the reasons why windows and mirrored surfaces may be so dangerous for birds. You know, this is where you could say like, okay, so the data shows the migrant birds are dying at much higher rates by window collisions than resident, resident birds. It seems reasonable to think that the local birds learn those areas which might be dangerous for them and they avoid them. Um, then you ask whether Natasha's two alternative hypotheses were, um, were answered. Uh, next steps as a scientist. You know, I always like this because um, uh, so many students want to make sure they always have the right answer. And, you know, what we're really looking to do is just, let, let's just sort of brainstorm. Um, if the birds are used to windows, will they act different in places without windows? That's a good one. Um, we need to figure out how they uh, react to the wild in comparison to the city. Um, and then, you know, think up other ideas on your own. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer, but there are more complete answers and less complete answers. So uh, what you're going to be doing today is I've got a tale of two scorpions uh, in the Google Classroom. Um, I am having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to make them editable, so I'll be experimenting with that. Uh, if things don't work out, just print it out and... Um, and write on it and you know send me pictures back that's fine um, but I'm really gonna do my best to make sure that that is together all right hope that answers your questions and I will talk to you later